Uh, we're still waiting for one speaker. Maybe uh, we can start uh, first. Uh, I have a, a, a couple of uh, housekeeping items. Um, and please mute, mute your mic if you're not talking. And also uh, feel free to post your question in the chat. And uh, uh, my co-chair is, um, is more into the chat. And also we have a collaborative notes. Uh, the link is also in the chat and please send your name, uh, uh, affiliation and email. So, um, so we can uh, contact you later. Um, so by saying that, I think you're welcome to the session. Uh, this is a, um, a interest group session uh, on the, um, the certification of, uh, of trustworthy repositories. Uh, uh, is a session I organized uh, with uh, two of my other my co-chairs. Uh, uh, my name is Dao Wei Lin. Uh, I'm the Associate Director for Bioinformatics uh, at uh, uh, National Institute of in uh, Allergy and Infectious De Disease, NIH U US. And, uh, and I will pass on to my co-chairs to introduce themselves. Uh, first, maybe, uh, John, would you take up uh, to introduce yourself? Yes, hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Petters. I'm also in the States. I work at Virginia Tech University Libraries in, in, the, in data services. I've been a co-chair with uh, Dalwe for three years now. Yeah, <laughs> nice working with you. And Meredith uh, is another co-chair, and she is very likely on site. <laughs> on site, yes. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. My name is Meredith Goins. I'm the executive director of World Data System. I am based uh, out of the University of Tennessee Innovation Institute. Um, I do want to say that WDS is uh, very proud to be a part of this session, mostly because our members are required to be core trust seal certified. So this is very important to our membership. And I'm glad to be here today with my co hosts. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Meredith. And uh, uh, I assume uh, some people may now be familiar with the, uh, this interest group, and I will just have a little bit of introduction. Uh, so the, uh, this interesting group is uh, talking about all the issues related to the trustworthy data repository certification. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the CATRA seal is uh, an output of this uh, interest group. And uh, is a uh, combine the um, the certification standard from uh, data CO approval, uh, and also the uh, the uh, the world data system uh, certification system, and combine into one uh, about like a, more than three years ago, and um, and that's the uh, the one of the accomplishment uh, at the RDA, and another. Uh, uh, accomplishment is the trust principles is also generated from this interest group uh, and uh, that is for um, the uh, the 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 people who are uh, other repository are not that uh, are ready to be certified but they still want to follow the best practices of uh, repository operations and that's the uh, the uh, the principles for uh, for for those people. So um, since we don't have, uh, I still don't have uh, Jonathan Crabtree supposed to talk about the, um, talk about the certification uh, standard uh, culture seal, uh, there are some requirements updates uh, and maybe we just start with the, um, with the trust principles. Uh, and John and Meredith, what do you think? I agree. Okay, so maybe let me share my screen. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. Can you see my slides? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, first, let me talk about. Uh, the, uh, the trust principles. And uh, on the right of the slides, uh, you can see the, up, uh, the upright corner, and you can see there is a, a lot of e evolution on the certification standard 
in the past two or three decades. And it's very complex uh, landscape, but it's, it's necessary. It's for the, um, the professionals trying to preserve the, the data long-term that it can be reused uh, in the future. Uh, however, uh, the, is, there's a lot of young repositories and there's a lot of generous repositories. They may not uh, need uh, the level of long-term preservations for, um, for, for their audience. So, uh, but they, they do need uh, the uh, follow the best practices, as I said. So for them, a need to have a, a simple and easy to understand the principles for them to, to follow. And so the, uh, the idea is to translate that complex uh, landscape into some simple message, uh, like the, the trust principles. And that's the motivation for developing trust principles. And so since the, those principles will, will be followed not by the, uh, the day-to-day preservation professionals, and then that those uh, messages need to be concise, uh, but also need to be measurable. So it, uh, and make it practical if you follow them. Uh, the very important uh, uh, point of the developing trust principles, it is not to replace any existing standards criteria of uh, or best practices that actually is trying to build on top of them. And so to, uh, to uh, extract the most important and easy to understand part of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the standards or operations and to provide high level starting point for advocating, supporting and uh, implementing all certifications for uh, domain repositories and perform assessments for uh, other repositories. So uh, the trust principles uh, are a acronym of uh, five components. And the first is uh, transparency. And transparency is the foundation for trust principles. And without the transparency, there's no trust. And transparency is referred to that the repository will make it clear to their users what their missions are and what is the term of use and what is the length of the, the time they can preserve data and what is the capacity. And those need to be provided uh, to their, their users uh, with the public uh, available and verifiable evidence. So that's transparency. And the responsibility is to put things into action and to ensure that uh, the data in the collection are uh, authenticated and, uh, and then also in, ensure the integrity of the data. And, uh, and the things like uh, uh, also like to, uh, to follow the community, the community meta standards and provide interface to upload, download data and to maintain a, a reliable and persistent services. Uh, so that's the responsibility. And for user focus is to put the user in the center of the operation. Uh, that means not only the repository need to monitor what the current use, but also the future and the evolving use. So the repository need to uh, uh, develop solutions to address those changing needs. And the sustainability is to uh, preserve the data for the long term. And what that entail is that uh, the repository need to evaluate the risk factors and the secure fundings or resources that can keep their promise for the users uh, for uh, for a long time uh, for a long time. And then technology uh, is to provide infrastructure and capability to support secure, persistent, and uh, reliable services. So that's uh, trust principles. And then the trust principles has been published in uh, uh, scientific data uh, about two years ago. And as I said, the trust principles is not a, uh, a new thing, is trying to summarize the existing knowledge and, and, uh, uh, and experiences in the simple terms. So uh, there was a large body of literatures to address each of the components, like you know, why uh, the transparency is important and why responsibility is important and how users trust 
is associated with uh, uh, with the the trust of the archive, and uh, and then the sustainability uh, has been uh, interest and uh, and seriously studied by a lot of funding agencies and professional societies, and and the the, the technology is uh, very obvious that uh, in the digital world that you need the uh, cyber security, you need the enough capacity to support the operation. And, uh, and since uh, the trust principles is built on top of uh, the community effort, and when the trust principle was released, uh, is very quickly adopted by uh, the community. And so far, there was a 42 uh, worldwide organizations has uh, adopted uh, trust principles. And uh, uh, the, the paper in the scientific data is continued to be uh, one of the main manuals that uh, the people learn about trust principles. And uh, there is 20, uh, 23,000 views since it's published. And uh, and I think the last, uh, like six months ago is probably a 19,000. So the things increased really quickly. And for citations, uh, now it passed 100 citations and the last, uh, uh, plenary, we, we, we have about uh, like 60 citations. So, um, so trust principles has been, uh, uh, has been trying to deliver the message and it seems very received uh, by the community. So um, while the, uh, the trust principle is, is uh, widely accepted now, but it doesn't mean it help uh, achieve the goal, which is to build a robust, trustworthy data repository ecosystem. And there's a lot of challenges uh, ahead. And uh, the, um, for example, that uh, there is a certification is uh, is exist, which is a good thing, but it's mainly for uh, the domain specific repositories. And there's a lot of other repository type out there as uh, they need also uh, grown up and serve their their uh, their designated communities, and uh, and since like a lot of people now like read about uh, uh, trust principles and there's a lot of uh, policy reports mention trust principles and people start to uh, learn more and more like what is the what is it how to define trust principles and then find out there's a lot of concepts that are uh, are need to be further uh, clarified. And for example, like you know, what what is the criteria? What is the uh, what is the uh, the metrics? And and what is the implementation? Uh, what is the endorsement? You know, all that uh, things are uh, are happening. And so so we need uh, to clarify those uh, the concepts so that we can can make uh, that the clear guidance for people who want to make their operation trustworthy. And, uh, and also since there is, uh, it's much more, the message is much more spread and there's a lot of uh, new uh, new people coming on board. So we kind of extend this uh, stakeholder uh, group, uh, but all these people need to work to get together to make the trust principle uh, useful for, uh, for repository operations. So uh, this is a, a roadmap for uh, for trust principle scenes uh, about maybe three years ago, and uh, the there was uh, a lot of uh, community in, uh, engagement. There was like uh, two hundred people comment on the white paper, and then uh, then all decided is uh, uh, the the trust principle is more than RDA audience, so we can publish the data. Uh, published the the paper in uh, uh, Nature Scientific Data, and then there was a lot of uh, uh, new people involved uh, into the uh, developing the trust principles, and then there is a couple of uh, symposium conferences uh, that uh, the build around the trust principles, and probably I don't have the link here, but you can go to the uh, the RDA uh, website. There is a, a trust principle in the endorsement page and there are the list some of the link that you can uh, follow through and um so in the last uh two planner plenaries and we explore that uh what is the approach that will improve the trust principles and more importantly the uh to establish some clear path 
that from people who understand and interest in the trust principles and to maybe the certifications, which is uh, one of the, the main uh, instrument for, uh, for repository to demonstrate their trustworthiness to the, their users. So uh, I, I think the idea is that uh, maybe it's better to form a uh, working groups and uh, anybody can join. Um, and uh, including the people who attend uh, the, uh, the, this session, uh, feel free to contact us. Uh, so the uh, I think we map out, uh, talk about a lot of challenges and a lot of ideas to work through. Uh, but I think we think a lack of um, lack of a organizational uh, leadership and uh, and also like support. And and very uh, luckily, and uh, Meredith uh, uh, came came on board and uh, and uh, from. Uh, world data system and the, the leadership of what uh, WDS is also very supportive of uh, of trust principles and uh, and then the activities around it so um, so they uh, they are uh, agreeing to see uh, to uh, support this type of fully explore this effort so that's uh, the where we are and I think the this session uh, we want to uh, to work out a, a plan and then see if we can uh, uh, start applying for uh, RDA working group and then uh, continue the uh, the work of um, continue the work of the the trust principles. So I want to stop here and uh, uh, and to see if, if there is any questions so far. And now I we'll pass the uh, the presentation to Meredith. On site. Yes, I do have a question. This is Rama. Hey. Hi. Um, so we have core trust seal requirements that uh, many data repositories are certified on. And the question is, do trust principles place additional requirements on such repositories? Very, very good question. So uh, the answer is uh, is no, because the trust principles is at the principle level, is, is more specified the goals. So for example, that um, uh, they need repository to be tr transparency. And then the, the trust, the culture seal requirements uh, is trying to ensure that the repository will have the transparency. For example, the uh, the R01 uh, requirements is a uh, mission statement, so that they need uh, the repository to provide those requirements and to demonstrate that they are uh, open, like they're they're all they're transparent to their users. So I think it's the uh, the trust principle and the uh, culture seal. They're working at different levels. So I I think. Uh, uh, probably later on we can discuss it. I think the some people consider the uh, the culture seal type of standards, certification standards, maybe may more like an implementation of the trust principles. So they're not like conflicting with each other. Would you say the core trust principle core trust seal requirements are more rigorous than the trust principles because they are at a more detailed level? Uh, I I would say it's not a rigorous. I think it was is more. I think uh, I agree with you. It's more detailed. Like it, there's more detailed guidance. So the the trust principles does not specify the implementation details, right? Like they want the the repository to be transparent, but how to transparent is based on what the uh, the certain. Uh, at the designated community like require. Okay, thanks. There are no current questions? questions in the room. It looks like we have yeah. another online. <clears throat> Hi, Francois. Yes, hello. Uh, I It's a question or a comment uh, about around the same lines. Uh, similar lines to the previous one. I was 
wondering about endorsement of trust principles. You know, I, I come from a certified repository. So I have the impression that uh, being CTS is in a sense endorsing the trust principles because it's a, uh, so I, I think that you will have less endorsements than you could have simply because some people are at the next steps. Uh, uh, sorry, could, could you, I, what, 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 what do you mean that, uh, that I think I actually, I, I try to understand what, what do you say the last sentence? Yeah. No, I, I think that you could, uh, the people who are certified by core trust seal, yeah. in a sense, it an, it's a, an endorsement of the trust principles. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I am not sure that these people will go to a formal endorsement of a trust principle simply because they, in practice, they already endorsed it. Right. So right, right. it's yeah. it's when you when you count the endorsements, I think it's mm. uh, I mean it's a minimal set of endorsements in a sense simply because there are other people who already endorsed the principle by. Uh, going through quarter steel and getting it, or who are going through quarter steel currently, and it's a clear endorsement of a trust principle. Sure. So I am not telling you you have to count the quarter steel certified repositories, but you could say something about the fact that people who, who are quarter steel uh, implicitly endorse trust in a sense. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point, and I think uh, it is true that. Uh, the if you satisfy uh, the Carter seal requirement, it got certified, and and definitely I think that it's already followed the trust principles. Um, I, I think in that sense, there I think there is a large uh, number that uh, a large number of certified repository that will uh, that they can consider they follow the trust principles, uh, and um, and I I would say that the the endorsement is more like a um, intent. And I think they uh, is is uh, I think it still need uh, if you want to it's really kind of a matter of demonstrate what level of trustworthiness that uh, the people want to have for the repositories, and so the certification is uh, is I, I I would say a little bit more advanced uh, that than the people just endorse the trust principles. Th thanks for the comments. Okay, any other comments or questions? Do we have any questions in the room today? Yeah. None at this time. Okay. Do you have a, a comment in the chat? Uh, John, you have something to say? I do, but we can we can note the comment first. Uh, you know, saying that uh, ARDC, the Australian Research Data Commons, has not provided a formal endorsement. Uh, Facilitate a community of practice for repositories seeking seeking core trust seal certification. Yeah, so making this connection between the principles, the trust principles, and core trust seal certification, which is what Francoise was also talking about. But yeah. I think an important thing to note here is that we in, we we may all all of us already kind of feel like if you know something about the certification process and you know something about the trust principles, well, clearly they're related, right? Yeah. Obviously they're related in some way, but these two bodies the, the core trust field folks have not said the trust we we work under the trust principles these these things have not officially been done mm -hmm. although we right. may feel feel like there there's there's a clear connection these are these are some of the work that the working group would we were thinking about might need to do is, is make official connections between these things right okay which we'll talk a little bit more about soon definitely so Marge, i think the floor is yours hey thank you I can get my presentation up here. Here we go. Full screen for me, please. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, online and in person. I see many of our members. And first of all, thank you from the World Data System for continuing uh, to support certification, core trust seal, and the betterment of all uh, data repositories. So I am an optimist. I start with calling this the trust working group. We are currently an interest group, but I'm an optimist that will go towards a working group and we'll discuss that in just a minute. 
So who are we? So many of you know, as members, the World uh, Data System Mission, we're really about quality assured scientific data and data services, products and information and trusted scientific data services. Uh, trust is a part of our mission. That's lowercase t, but as we just discussed, uh, we see some of these overlaps. So support for certifications. We know that peer review is the gold standard. We all know what peer review is. We know that peer review is required. I, this is a plug. Please remember that as part of being a WDS member, we ask that you serve as a peer reviewer for other data repositories. Please feel free to reach out to the office, myself, my colleagues, or even Core Trust Seal directly to make sure that you serve in that capacity. Remember, it takes all of us together to make certification happen. That being said, repositories and <laughs> It, it's, it, I, I could say this, or I should have the author say this, we have to earn the trust of the community and we bring that together through us serving each other, reviewing each other and supporting each other and learning from one another. So consider that as part of your uh, task in life as a scholar, scientist, engineer, student. So as you know, there's much international coordination through all of this together. It takes all of us to come, but the leadership and logistical support is what uh, WDS would like to offer if we go into a working group session. Um, I would be honored and happy to serve as one of the co-chairs, um, be happy to support the organization of the calls and meetings, maintain group web pages, maintain the RDA presence, um, and lead the development's mission of the case statement, including the value proposition, all of that fun stuff that is required. There's a great process that we follow through RDA. I believe John will go much further into detail than I am. And also supporting regular communication. We know how important it is to know where we're at, what we're doing, and to meet our missions and goals. We have to communicate regularly, and we've got to stay focused. And this is something that WDS would be honored to support as we go forward if and when we go forward. So this is the actual case statement review process from the RDA website. Many of you are already familiar with this. John, again, will touch on this a little bit further. But again, we develop this. We submit the case statement and all of the different documentation required. It has a community review, which means we give feedback. Hey, look, it's peer review again. Uh, and then we have revisions, that cycle of revision that we're all familiar with. Uh, go out to the tab review, another possible revision, again, more peer review, uh, and then the council review, it, see the cycle here, um, and then group endorsement. That is the ultimate goal if we decide to go to a working group. And if you are interested in being a working group member or supporting part of this, in addition, I always welcome you to contact me, but most important, John has been very um, thorough and adding in a link, please add your name, add your contact information. We want to um, engage you in the best way possible. Um, and, and we're certainly interested in your support. So that's it from my side. If there's any, I have a question on the floor uh, for WDS and I don't know where my floating mic is uh, to be able to, uh, okay. Link. I'm sorry, pardon me? Oh, the link, if you look, oh, I'm sorry, it's in the chat. Um, oh, okay, so uh, if John, would you mind uh, posting that again, just real quick so that there's a link in there, please sign up, I certainly appreciate it. So he was asking where the link is to sign up. So it's, it, yes, those are in the notes, but the very top, uh, there is a list of names and an email address request. I just put it in the chat just recently, just 30 seconds ago. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions from here or from? Yes, sir. I think online, uh, uh, Bob Don have her uh, raised the hands. Bob, please. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Jawai. And I'm trying to make the video work. Okay. Oh, we're on, we're on yes. stage two. That's great. Um, so, yeah, my, my question is related to this proposed working group. And uh, perhaps I not paying attention closely enough but uh so I, I it's my understanding you have an interest group this is the interest group and then you're planning a spin-off from this interest group or are you talking about this interest group becoming a working group instead of an interest group 
Bob, it's great to see you today. Thank you for joining. Yes, we are proposing to move the interest group to a working group. Did that answer your question? Uh, partially. Uh, then uh, my question would be, my follow-up question would be, what interest group would the working group be under? And uh, also, what would be the deliverables uh, supposedly within like 18 months or so from when the working group is initiated? Yeah. No, I think I, I, I would say, uh, Meredith, maybe I think there is some terminology uh, uh, definition. I think since the working group is more like a short term and there is a, a target goal, and I was thinking that uh, probably there will be people who are uh, interested in developing more uh, for trust principles and and, uh, and and the relationship with the uh, with the uh, the different stakeholders, and then that can be a uh, working group. And then for the general discussions around the certifications, it's not just about trust, about trust CRA, but but also for uh, ISO standard, you know, Nexter, that type of discussions will still be in this RDA and WDS uh, interest group. So, um, so I think that's kind of one comment. And the other comments, uh, Bob, I think we would probably would discuss more about uh, what is the uh, potential uh, tangible goals uh, that uh, I, th I think that's, that's what really we want to hear from uh, the people who participate in this interest group, and uh, we have, I think you uh, you you participate like the um, in the informal working group. Uh, I think we probably want to expand what has been discussed there to uh, to define the goals for uh, for the working for the for the work the working group. I see. So you're saying that the interest group would remain and not turn into a working group. It would spin off a separate working group. Yeah, yeah, and I think that the interest groups because they they have been long existing, right? It's not you know, it's not like there's a time limit, but the working group has one. So I think I think we're probably like the uh, in terms of working group that eighteen month, yeah. uh, we kind of uh, do something that focus. I see. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. We have a uh, question. Oh, Please go ahead. Yes, I was uh, just going to say what has already been said, which is that I think we need to keep an interest group in VRDA as a meeting point for all the discussions about certification and trustworthiness. Mm -hmm. So I think this has been answered already. As a goal for the working group, uh, it's completely true that there is a need to get deliverables in the end of a working group after mm -hmm. 18 months. So in practice, uh, I have the impression that you would like to build the working group around something like defining best practices for implementation uh, of trust principles or something like that, which is also uh support how to to help people to to go to certification in a second step something like that or am i wrong yeah no i think i actually that's uh is this something we want to talk about so maybe that's a good segue to uh i think to i, let, I have a question uh, here on oh. uh, on the floor oh sure go ahead <laughs> sorry um this is hank again um from this time my head is on from the Fraunhofer Institute for Secure Information Technology, um, speaking somehow as uh, heads on as a chair in the IETF and the Trusted Computed Group. So, so Trusted Computing is, has already made term, heard two terms today. One of them was trust and then trustworthy. So uh, one is the decision, one is the characteristic. And so what I'm heavily involved in is doing that for supply chain integrity, transparency, and trust. We deliberately did not say trustworthy for that. So and we were also were talking a lot of endorsements, which is one way to enable trust decisions. Then can be the technical side for trust decision that is proving trustworthy characteristics of the underlying repository with uh, evidence mm -hmm. that is generated in a trustworthy manner. 
and that has nothing to do with trust decision in the first place. It's also not an endorsement, but when you want to do trustworthy repositories like a TDRs, I think, I skimmed the document real fast. Mm -hmm. So, um, so um, um, that, that is something that can be um, um, augmented, I would say, with, with technical solutions that are um, available today, actually. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think that, the, 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 that this work could benefit from those. And I think the work we are doing in the IETF and the, and the TCG would really uh, benefit from the fair and interoperable aspect because not everything that is trustworthy must be interoperable, unfortunately. So we are really focusing right now uh, on an ongoing work. We're actually having a boff, <laughs> multiple boffs about that at the moment. And so the, um, I think the interoperability requirement from your trust document, uh, I think is, 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 under, is, is, is highlighting how important it is not just to have the technical evidence and not also have the uh, um, the endorsements, that's then the certification, anything coming from the external, um, but also having uh, the, uh, the, 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 the demand for reusability and interoperability here. And, and mm -hmm. I think that is sometimes underestimated when you talk about trust only. And I know that the trust document has this fair word in it, and it says reusable, but, but, but just wanted to highlight that this is underestimated so often because everybody's just technical evidence or endorsement, and this is maybe something that could bring this more together. And I would like to see that chart or something or something. That would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your feedback. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so maybe let me share my screen and I let John to uh, summarize uh, some work that uh, a informal uh, trust uh, working group have been done. Uh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll start talking about it. Dalway will provide more detail, actually. He, he's got more in there. But uh, try, and, try and set the stage. Let me start the video here, excuse me. Uh, set the stage for discussion about, about, about what, what we might want this working group to do. And some of this is reiterated. I've already been discussed a little bit, but it does not hurt to say it again. Um, so the trust principles have gotten a lot of, of airplay. Uh, I've been picked up by a lot of, a lot of different uh, stakeholders, including repositories, but funders, and, and many other kinds of groups. Uh, what does this mean for people and, and who does it mean it for? And we just had a little discussion about trust and trustworthiness. And, and uh, so, so what, do these, what do these trust principles mean? And something we've already, Dalway has already said, and it's important to note again, this is not a repository certification process. The trust principles are, could be seen as something above certification processes, not yet officially linked, something that the working group might want to, we might have one at working group to do, but see, so repositories can aspire to principles like the trust principles. And we have an example we've, we've had uh, um, within our uh, plenary sessions a couple of years ago, we had an example from a Serbian repository uh, that, that wrote a paper talking about how they, they aspired to the trust principles as in using, using them as a guide towards what, how, might they, how might, they de might they develop their repository, but not trying to meet particular certification requirements and, and, rigorous, and, and, and with rigor. Uh, but just giving a general guiding, guiding view of how their repository might develop. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But we can't really, we're talking about a principles, a set of principles. We can't really meet or comply with principles. We, we can aspire to principles and then they can, principles can be used to create requirement sets, a criteria that we might want to meet and that those, those criteria might be under the principles. But this is not a certification process itself. And in fact, when the trust principles are, are developed, we already have repository certification processes. They already exist right now. Uh, let's go to the next slide, that way. <laughs> so uh, we've actually, uh, in the last two plenaries, we've actually had representatives from, from existing repository certification processes, from Core Trust Seal, from Nestor, which is based in Europe, and uh, from ISO, 16363, which is the trustworthy digital repositories uh, processing that the International Standards Organization has set up. Uh, and we can think of these, and we've already talked about it, uh, could, be, could, be, could be thought of as implementations of the trust principles. And uh, something we wanted to hear and, and have heard from, from representatives of these certification processes is, is what they think about 
these principles. You know, they already exist, and now these principles come over, come around, and, and how do they how do they uh, relate? Well, in general, I'm mean, not not trying to go into too much detail. They generally support the concept of having a principles framework. It's it's a nice fast way to talk about talk about what we what we'd like to see for repositories. It's something that's catchy. You know, like we have fair data, fair for digital objects, trust for containers for those objects, for repositories, that's very nice. But uh, there was a lot of concern about misapplication of these principles. Uh, we've already seen and have some examples in the wild, people writing, this repository complies with the trust principles. And it's a principles, it's a set of principles. You can't comply with that. You can comply with certification criteria and meet requirements. But this is not necessarily a meaningful thing to say. And some of the repository, I think it was our Nestor representative specifically said, I'm worried about people circumventing circum certification processes and just saying they're following the trust principles without going through any rigorous process. Uh, yeah, so there's a little worry about are people going to misinterpret where these principles sit and how they should be, how, they, how, should, they, how should they be seen and be applied. Uh, so next slide, Dawei. So one of the goals here, and, and, and Dawei will talk a little bit more about this, but one of the goals here is to try and reduce this potential for ambiguity confusion as the trust principles have become very uh, very popular within, within the data world. Uh, reduce ambiguity and confusion between the principles, the trust principles and certification processes that already exist, uh, metrics and criteria that go under those certification processes and other principles frameworks. How do the trust principles relate to the FAIR principles? How do they relate to the care principles? We have nice principles around handling indigenous data. How do these, how are these related? And right now we have some ideas, but we don't have really clear, we don't have clarity. Uh, and so they are you know, trying to clarify these definitions, clarify these relationships. And some of this work has been has been uh, started in this informal working group that Dawei already mentioned that we participated in. And it was led, led uh, quite a bit by, by Vim Hugo and from Don's, I don't believe he's on the line. Uh, but he had some he had some capacity to really look into this and draft it out kind of a framework to start with. Uh, uh, so we have a, a lead on this, but I, I think this is trying to set, trying to give a, a a purpose, a case statement, a reason for why we might want to do this. And of course, it's up for the the people who who, who join the working group and set it up and want to write the case statement up for them to decide what the direction should be. But this is what we saw as currently a a, a, a missing piece. That there is a connection, a formal, a more formal connection made between these things, uh, before, between all these pieces. So uh, I'll stop there, that way, and I'll let you let you carry it on, uh, carry on from there. Okay. Yeah. Th thanks, John. I think that is very good summary of the the challenges that we're we're facing, but also the opportunities that we can, we're going to like use the trust principles to connect people and motivate people and uh, inspire people to. To, to build a, uh, a trustworthy uh, repository ecosystem. So uh, I wanted to highlight uh, 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 some other discussions that uh, that is mentioned uh, and uh, talked about in the previous uh, plenaries. And this is the um, from uh, Mickey uh, Lindelar and uh, and from Nestar. And then they talk about you know what what, what they see uh, from a standard. Uh, body point of view that what what other benefit that for uh, trust principles uh, for example uh, they recognize the it is a common framework that can unite uh, all stakeholders and uh, a, a pneumatic helps to help uh, people talk about uh, the the importance of the repositories especially for founders right I think why they want to uh, invest in the repositories, uh, because you know, there uh, the people need trustworthiness, and uh, and also that uh, the the five principles uh, is easier for people to get on. Uh, I think uh, John mentioned that was was very uh, uh, critical points is that uh, is the the trust principle is not designed to let people circumvent the certification, but I think is is a starting point. So that's a kind of good. Uh, the good points uh, of uh, trust principles, but also the, the challenges is that the, the reason that different people have different interpretation because um, the, uh, it, it is a simple, it's a, it's a large goal, it's a high level goal. So you can have different type of uh, uh, interpretations. 
and also that um, the there's the details missing. And I think as a uh, in an earlier question asked about, you know, what what is the requirements? What is the uh, what is the the trust principles? So the requirements are the detail planning, and the the trust is more like bring the people, bring the, the attention to the uh, the value of the repositories. And if you want to uh, realize those value, and you need the detailed steps, and that's what the uh, hopefully like the uh, some certification standard or the characteristics of the repository will do. And uh, and then the uh, uh, the Mickey and the colleagues also gave very specific uh, recommendations, like in order for trust principles to uh, to have uh, uh, effective impact, and it's better to link with the um, with the the standards, like existing standards. And that's I think the uh, probably one of the things that working group will do to work with the existing standard bodies. And, uh, and John mentioned about uh, this uh, uh, conceptual framework uh, uh, initiated by uh, Lim Hogwo. And, uh, and on the slide, you can see you, all these terms probably you heard, and they're, they have overlap meanings. You know, uh, what is the criteria? What is the principles? And then so we need to give a clear definition so we can talk about the same thing. And, uh, and then uh, we can go from the uh, aspiration goal as the motivations to the implementations uh, that uh, the people can ensure that the uh, the trustworthy operation is happening. And then the um, so these are some uh, some really uh, thoughtful steps that uh, is is hard to go from a principles uh, which is uh, mostly define motivations to implementations. And so we need probably to have the big base steps as published and, uh, and then use the trust principle as example. Uh, for example, the trust principle specify that uh, the repository needs to, need to, uh, sustainability and that's a goal. And then in terms of uh, to realize the realization of those goals, and then you can look for uh, the uh, the R10 requirements in the Quartra seal, which is probably uh, John Carpentry will talk a little bit more uh, later. And that description of the uh, the requirements is a little bit more explanation of what the sustainability means. And then if a repository want be uh, sustainable and let people trust they're sustainable, they need to provide the evidence. I right, put the evidence publicly and out there, right? And then the last step of implementation is that uh, you can say what you said, but it's better to have independent evaluation to see if the evidence you provide are demonstrate you're sustainable. So that's kind of the, the landscape that we're, we're, we're thinking about. And this, uh, again, is still very draft. And uh, but that's uh, give you a sense that what what the working group uh, will do. And uh, so um, the uh, Emeritus already laid out the uh, the general uh, workflow, uh, and there is a couple of detailed things that we need to do. Like for example, we need to develop a charter. Uh, that's what uh, the requirement by RDA working group, and uh, so we need to. Uh, uh, I think that is still in discussion and. Now with the uh, WDS uh, uh, that is waiting to help organize the uh, the working groups, uh, I think we'll we'll have uh, uh, get it going pretty quickly. And uh, uh, John already mentioned about the uh, a couple of uh, uh, value propositions, and uh, we we definitely want uh, the um, the people who are interested in joining the working group to develop the value proposition for us. And uh, uh, the uh, as uh, we point out that the that last two plenaries, I, or we already engaged with the all three uh, standard bodies of the certification, and uh, we need to develop the plans. and uh, And then once we define the value pro value proposition, probably we can uh, also draft the uh, the adoption plan. So in terms of the initial membership, uh, I uh, I think I want to skip this. 
uh, this is the people have already uh, uh, discussed like bi-weekly for probably like six months. And uh, uh, most of them are really uh, 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 passionate about the trustworthy data repositories. And I think uh, probably Meredith and colleagues uh, will be joining this group. So we already have something going. So uh, I think that's um, uh, that's what we're thinking about probably uh, after this plenary and uh, and we want uh, the people to join us to uh, to develop a working group applications. So that's uh, all I want to say. Um, so now maybe we can open the floor uh, for discussions, like you know what 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 you guys think about uh, what what we should do for the working group. please. Yes, just to to for someone to say something. Uh, I I am really worried by the possible confusion uh, introduced by the fact that there are the trust principles and that uh, we are trying to to push and help repositories to go to to core trust still at least in in our case in France. Mm -hmm. So I I simply hope that the working group will not introduce more confusion in a sense. Sure. So sure. I think you have to be very careful with that because uh, there is a, a, a it can become worse in a sense if there is still another layer in the system. So you I I I, I suppose you are very aware of that, but I would like to insist on the fact that it's not to introduce still another layer in a system which is not very understandable by people in general. Definitely, definitely. I think, I think, I think, uh, yeah, I think at that point, we should emphasize again and again. Uh, also, Francois, we welcome you to join our working group. You know, I think that's important that uh, we have uh, different perspectives. Uh, but thanks for, thanks for the comments. Yes, if there is a working group, I will certainly be a member of a working group. I am not sure I can commit to create a working group and be uh, and run it, let's say, but I can certainly sure. be a member and express my concerns. As <laughs> Great. Consider uh, potential deliverables that would aid in clarifying and um, identifying the differences between the principal and the core trust seal. That might be one way that we could help um, share the differences and the commonalities at the same time. Sounds great. Uh, Rama? Well, I think um, I just heard the answer to what I was, well, not, not the answer. I, I heard the same comment I was going to make. But anyway, I think the, one of the first things that the working group has to do is provide a mapping between the principles and the requirements, uh, whether it is uh, core trust seal requirements or whether it is uh, meeting fair principles versus trust principles. So all these connections and mappings will need to be done. And that needs to be quite clear to the people. Yeah, that's that's a great suggestion. Uh, I wish Wim Hogo will be here because uh, he is uh, is working on it for um, for, for, for the mapping. Uh, and unfortunately, it is 2 o'clock in the morning in Europe. So. <laughs> But but I think that's a great suggestion. I think that's that is uh, like I think uh, kind of write it down that that's something we need to do. And again, uh, Rama, you're also welcome to join our group. Uh, I work very few hours these days. I'm <laughs> close to uh, uh, almost full retirement, so uh, we'll have to see what all I can get involved in. I, I see a lot of interesting, interesting things are going on, both in the uh, NASA working groups that I'm involved in, as well as the ESIP area and the RDA. So I just need to be selective about what, what I want to get involved in. I'll yeah. certainly follow with interest what's happening here, but uh, I don't know if I will join or not. Yeah, okay. So uh, I think maybe one last comment, I wanna give uh, some time to, uh, to John Crabtree and who, uh, who is able to join us uh, 
and to talk about the controversial um, requirement update. So any uh, quick comments? Any comments in the room? None here. No, okay. okay, it's great discussions. Uh, so uh, John, uh, how do you want to present your slides? Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry for being late here. I can share my screen. I have my slides here, if that would be okay. Sure. Uh, are you able to share your screen? Uh, we'll see. We'll give it a shot here. Let's see. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right. I will, let me put this in slideshow mode here, see if. Okay, can everybody see the introduction slide there? Yes. All right. So uh, again, sorry for uh, miscommunication. I had the, the wrong date. I had the great right time, wrong date on the calendar. So uh, I did make it a little bit late here, but I wanted to uh, uh, talk a little bit about Core Trust Seal. Uh, again, my name is Jonathan Crabtree. I'm actually affiliated with the University of North Carolina, the Odom Institute. Uh, we manage an archive there at the University of North Carolina. It's a, a large social science research repository. Uh, but it, uh, I'm actually representing Core Trust Seal here. I, I am the current chair uh, of the board there and, and help work with a, a great number of volunteers and a fabulous community. We'll talk a little more later about that. So uh, why certification? So, so doing, going after everyone else's talk, this, will, this seems obvious now, but uh, you know, open science and societal and political pressures are really pushing folks to have, uh, uh, to, to guarantee trustworthiness somehow, some way. Uh, we all want to reuse and repurpose data. Uh, it, it's imperative, uh, especially with, uh, uh, issues going on all around the world. It's a global issue. Uh, we need to work uh, together to have data that we can trust. Now, um, since, since this was, I was gonna do this first, not second, but uh, this is not the trust that you were just speaking of. This is the word trust. Like we're, we need to trust our data sources. Uh, and it's been a challenge for many years uh, that uh, we're skeptical of data sources. Uh, even more today than we were in the past, uh, data depositors want to be sure that their data is safe, remain accessible, and they're meaningful over time, that someone can use them into the future. Uh, it's not worth their effort to go through the process of depositing, creating metadata, and doing that if the data won't be accessible and usable, meaningful over time. And they need to trust that the repository that they uh, give this over to or uh, allow the stewards to do that. So data users want to know that they the data is preserved properly. Uh, so they're good quality. They can be used over time. And data funders, uh, it's an investment. Data is the fuel behind research. And collecting this data is important. And they want to uh, entrust that it's actually saved for the next round of uh, uh, research that needs to be there. So. As uh, uh, both Jonathan and, and Daiwei talked about, there's several certification standards. We represent only the core trust seal here, but there's also the ISO 16363 and Nestor. Uh, it is a, a, a plenty of uh, variations in that. The ISO is much more in depth uh, with on site uh, reviews versus uh, core trust seal with a, you know, a more lightweight uh, 16 or so uh, requirements. So there's some variation in these, but there are certification standards that we can use to show that we have that trustworthy characteristics within our repositories. So I wanna talk a little bit about course trust seal and you may have gone over this in the first few moments uh, of this uh, work of this uh, presentation, but uh, this working group here, this interest group uh, is where it began. Uh, we had uh, a data seal of approval uh, where many repositories were going through this certification process, a peer review process. The WDS had their certification of regular members in the world data systems. 
that came together in this working group at RDA and out of that partnership uh, became Core Trust Seal. And that's where the beginnings of Core Trust Seal started. Uh, and we've been moving forward since then. So congratulations to this working group, this interest group. It's a valuable interest group. And I agree with Francoise. This is a super important uh, interest group that needs to continue uh, the great work it's been doing over the years. Um, so core trust seal, the critical component to think about core trust are the first four letters. And, and since we're talking about the mnemonics and acronyms, core is important here. Uh, it, it, is, it is not uh, about every single little thing you can do your data. It's the core components. The objectives are to safeguard and ensure high quality and reliable data for the future and look at the core components of that for those repositories to give uh, everyone from producers to funders to consumers, everyone that has to touch this data to give them assurances that they can trust that. And it's a core, not doesn't go into each and every disciplinary mean, it's the core components that cross all these repositories. So the governance was set up uh, actually during this uh, working group or this interest group. And currently this is the, the uh, uh, board and the directors. Uh, uh, we have a lot of great people on this group. Uh, some, of we're, some of who are on this uh, call tonight today. And I thank each and every one of you. Uh, I thank everyone in this community because we are a peer review community. This is not a, a, a profit making thing. It is all peers and we work to help each other. Uh, that takes us to our assembly of reviewers. Uh, assembly of reviewers uh, are the people that do the work uh, out there looking at all these repositories and helping each other become better repositories. Uh, these are uh, anonymous, but they are uh, peers. They are people that have had uh, certified repositories previously and they review those repositories based upon their experiences and their knowledge of certifying their own repository. Uh, and they work together as a team with the um, Core Trust Seal Board to approve all of these. So as I said before, this initiative started as a not-for-profit, community-based, very strong ties to the Research Data Alliance, and in particular, this interest group. Uh, it's a global uh, certification and a global mission. It is domain agnostic. Uh, we cross all domains. We look at the core of what it takes to run a repository and manage those digital objects. Uh, we don't get into the science. We don't get into uh, uh, talking about how each individual domain does their own science. We look to the repository to have the expertise to know their designated community, and to have the expertise to deal with their own community. Uh, so we look at that, but we look at it on a repository by repository basis. So it's a, it's a multi-step process to get certified. There are, as I said before, there's 16 requirements. I, I would almost say 17. There's an R0 that talks about uh, uh, the, the brief description of your repository. It talks about your designated uh, community and uh, things like insourcing and outsourcing, just the basic background for your repository, uh, I feel that's super important. So really there's 17 things that are super important here. Um, once you fill out that self-assessment self to the best of your ability, using the extended guidance, using the uh, website where you can go look at other people who had come before you, they're published. So all the certifications are published. Once you fill those things out as a repository, you submit those and it's peer reviewed by two independent uh, experts. And these independent reviews uh, have to be both satisfied. Uh, once they're satisfied, it goes back to the, the Course Trust Seal Certification Board and it's reviewed uh, for basically a third time, but we, we overview all that happens there. So there's a little bit of a checks and balances there. Uh, as I said earlier, the applications are successful they're made public and, and everyone can see the transparency. So that T and trust, that transparency is that when you say you do uh, XYZ uh, process to the data, 
uh, it will be public and people will expect that. Uh, there are some administrative fees. Uh, they and they're for uh, valid for a three-year certification, so it's very modest, uh, three hundred and some euros a year, basically, and it and it basically barely covers uh, the process of getting our website up uh, and some of the minimal cost we have. Uh, everyone is a is a uh, volunteer on the board. All the peer reviewers are volunteers. There's very little paid help at all, so it's it is a volunteer process where we all work together to make this a better community. Um, so far, there's over 126 uh, repositories that have made this transition to the Core Trust seal. Uh, there are still uh, 40 some, 42, I think, uh, WDS certified repositories and, and 13 of the legacy uh, data seal approvals that have yet to make that transition. Uh, so there is plenty of uh, uh, more people to go through the process and we're getting more and more requests every day and the, the, the workloads are moving up and up and up every time we look at some of these. So as I mentioned, uh, your uh, certification lasts for three years, but part of our charter also says that we must look at these requirements every three years to be sure that they are still following the norms of the community and things we should be looking at. Uh, the, our world is not static. Uh, we all know that we, in order to provide quality uh, repository services for the research community, we have to uh, update our standards, we have to update our training, we have to look at ourselves. So part of that is looking back into these requirements and seeing if these 16 or 17, as I mentioned, uh, requirements still fit and are doing the right thing. So uh, we went through a process uh, the first step was look at that three years of work. Uh, ap applicants are able to put comments uh, in all of these applications. The board reviews all of these and all the notes are saved. So we know the things and the problems that, uh, that reviewers have had, problems that repositories have had, uh, issues and challenges. All of those things were pulled together by looking back at previous applications uh, and uh, review processes. And they uh, turned into some suggested changes and additions and moving some things around that we'll talk about a little bit later. So we took those and surveyed the community. This is a peer driven process. So the idea is we send it back to the community and let the, give them their opportunity to look at all of the, the, the potential changes that their peers have said that, look, what about changing it this way? Uh, we sent that out. Uh, we reviewed that feedback, we incorporated that feedback into a draft, uh, and then sent that to our working group within the board, and then the board itself reviewed it, and uh, just this week has approved a new draft uh, and uh, released that final draft, and that link is in this presentation, and, and we'll share that as well. So today is the day we actually have a, a DOI and a shared draft for the community. Um, we do want to have uh, one final check by the community because sometimes when things move around, lots of additions and we, we incorporated all those feedback, we wanna be sure it still uh, meets the, the needs of the community and be sure we didn't make any major mistakes. Uh, so there is a, a feedback period uh, uh, for the rest of, I think up to sometime in July uh, that we can get some more information, more feedback and then we'll work on it uh, to release the 23 to 2025 requirements. And we'll go over that timeline here in just a moment. So we uh, surveyed uh, quite a number of uh, people. We sent it out to all of our uh, constituents, uh, everyone in this community and uh, around 145, 150 uh, respondents responded. Uh, what was interesting is uh, many were uh, core trust seal uh, repositories but uh, there was quite a few that were not. And we asked that question that, uh, are you going to apply? And some said they're not in scope. Others are preparing their application, but only a very few, only 10 said they were not uh, uh, planning to apply for a core trust seal uh, that were in scope or felt they were in scope. So rather than go through limited time here, rather than go through every single change that was on there uh, and it's on the survey, I thought I'd give a quick example uh, and this is very typical across the board of uh, the types of responses we got. So in this case, 
there was some terminology change for rights management uh, RO2 here. Uh, and uh, we allowed, uh, in this case, three choices. Uh, either you can agree with the change and you're okay with moving it forward, or you agree that you do not want to make any change, or I have other changes, and then you can propose changes and you add them in. So this is the, the methodology we use, and we went through each and every one of these changes and allowed people to either agree or disagree, and as well as to give them more feedback if they, dis if they disagreed, then what can we do to make it better? Uh, and sometimes that's no change at all. Uh, by and large, uh, if you, we added all of the, the survey results up, 78% uh, of the participants on average across all the questions agreed with proposed changes. This is not surprising since many of these suggestions came from the community itself, right? Uh, all of these things are rolled up from the peer review process and recorded and put back in there. So these are the things the community has been asking for, uh, but we wanted to be sure that we were uh, understanding it the way they wanted to. So we feel very confident that uh, we're pretty close uh, on target with what the community is looking for with uh, almost 78% agreeing. Of the ones who didn't agree, uh, if you're uh, back here, there was, uh, for example, in this case, there was 10 or 11 here that said they have uh, other changes to propose, those didn't agree. The, that's the, the 20 some percent that didn't agree. We were able to take that feedback and incorporate into these latest changes. So we should get even a higher percentage of agreement once we roll these uh, back into it. So um, some of the things that we did were to try to reorganize things to align them with the uh, current environment we're in today and make things a little more understandable. Um, it is very challenging to try to make sure all types of repositories of all disciplines understand exactly what we're looking for in some of these requirements, uh, as well as things like the FAIR data uh, and, and all the other initiatives that are going on. We wanted to align the best as possible with some of those. So that required us to move some things around and, and change a few things, for example. Um, uh, for example, in R2, it used to say licenses. That was a little limiting for some disciplines, that's fine, but there was other disciplines that rights management was a better term and fit well. Uh, things like R3, instead of a continuity of access, it's continuity of service. It's not necessarily only about access, about providing service, since these are organizational infrastructure needs in this case uh, that are in this, this block of things. There was also uh, some items that were moved uh, and that changed the numbers a bit. So I encourage you to be sure to read the text uh, when you go to redo your certifications. Our, uh, for example, in this case, R7 and R9, some of that is actually moved down to R14 which is in, in a different technology category than these were up in digital object management. So we regroup things to make them flow better and organize them better because quite often uh, within that technology, we had storage and integrity that, that people wanted to address. Uh, and in many cases, we saw them address it down there anyway. They would just stuff it in because they thought it belonged down there rather than put it up there and. Uh, in R9 where we were asking for it before. So we moved that around so it fits with how people really want to answer these questions and fit those things in. So things have moved around a bit. Uh, mostly it was redefinitions, uh, new terminologies, uh, things for example, uh, R4 was confidentiality and ethics. Now me as a social scientist, that makes total sense to me. We have this all the time. But quite often, other repositories say, well, we don't have human data, so I don't have any anything for confidentiality. But they really do have things for legal and ethical structures. So we feel all of this stuff is, is applicable to all disciplines because just because you don't have human subjects data that has confidentiality issues, you always have legal and ethical stuff within your domains. So we reworded some of that stuff. So most of, most of those changes were along those lines. So the other piece that was a fairly major change, uh, we changed the compliance levels. 
it was very confusing to many groups. Uh, we had a four level compliance and one of them non-applicable. And, and it was really hard to find cases where stuff was truly non-applicable. Um, so we've changed that to really two compliance levels now. Either you're in progress, all of these requirements are something you should be doing. So you should be either in progress or fully implemented, one of these two. Uh, and we still uh, will look at the, the entire application, not one single um, uh, requirement to judge the uh, trustworthiness of that repository. So just because you have some in progresses doesn't mean that you won't get certified. It just means that you're on their way to doing those things. You realize you're doing them and it's in process. Quite often we see that happening. Sometimes um, it, they, people even put dates that this is in progress and will be finished by August of 2022, that sort of thing. And when you have a recertification, then we look at that and things that you said were in progress and stated it should be done by a certain deadline. Then we look at it and say, okay, you said you were gonna do this, what changed? And give you a chance to explain that as we work through that. So that was a, a change that I think uh, people will notice right away when looking at, at some of the uh, requirements. Um, there is a uh, link in the end of this presentation, as well as in up in the middle of this presentation is a link, not only to the actual requirements, but also a set of change logs. And for the, uh, because of time here, I won't do them all, but here's a good example of how these change logs are public for you to look at. So you can see what the requirements used to be and what they are now and how those have changed. Uh, for example, here's for R3 and R4, uh, where, as I mentioned earlier, it used to be confidence and ethic, confidentiality and ethics, and now it's legal and ethical. And there's some, not only the actual changes are there, but also some ideals on why we were doing this, why the community told us that. Uh, you know, this change highlights that many data protection measures are legal uh, or, or legally uh, required and, and ethically governed. So if you'll look at some of these, you'll be able to determine not only the change, but why people in the community felt that it was important to make that change. And it'll help us kind of track and be transparent with all of these changes as we go along. So we'll talk about the timeline next steps. So over uh, July and August, uh, we're gonna be finalizing all of this, getting the actual final release. We're going to target uh, about mid-September, I believe, for release. And since we are a volunteer community of peers, sometimes things happen and, and things get behind. So we're going to do our best to stick to our uh, uh, deadlines. I, we're going to try to print, present at IPRES uh, these uh, requirements, the final release of these requirements. In order to make the transition uh, sometime in October, maybe late October, we will have to put a pause on new submissions because we got to transition all the, the online services over to the new requirements and it'll take some time. So over the November and December uh, holiday period, we're going to be working on making that transition, but also trying to work on existing submissions because these things take several months to process because of uh, delays with reviewers, finding reviewers, communication between repository and us, those things slow down. So we're gonna to try to get as much as we can wrapped up so we can start a, a little bit fresh or early next year. And we hope to start uh, turning on our new tool uh, early in 2023 and start accepting applications under these new requirements uh, that are listed there. Um, if uh, I have a, a little bit of an appendix here that has a link on the references and we can share all these slides that shows where these are, but I would be uh, happy to take questions and, and hopefully uh, I've uh, uh, touched base on the things you'd like to hear about. Thanks, John, for the, the great overview of the uh, the changes. And I, I saw uh, Bob uh, raise the hands up. Yes, I, I thank you very much. And uh, Dawai, and that was a great uh, presentation you gave, John. Um, and my question is, uh, looking at your timeline effect, <laughs> um, 
uh, I'm wondering, uh, you know, you're rolling out the new requirements and um, where does that leave the assembly of reviewers? In other words, uh, the last training uh, that uh, was for the assembly of reviewers, I, I think yes. uh, I, I was contributing to that myself. Um, that was uh, probably um, over a year ago. And uh, that was with the current requirements and that made sense at the time. However, uh, given that we would want all the reviewers to be uh, consistent with each other and consistent with the new requirements, I'm wondering if you're planning any training for the assembly of reviewers uh, that's associated with the uh, uh, timeline of the new rollout, thanks. Yeah, absolutely, Bob, you're exactly right. Uh, I should have put those in here. Uh, and I think if I, it, they, we actually have planned the working group, put those in, the, in some ideas on when to work on those things. Uh, I'm pretty certain that what we're gonna do is in October, November and December, try to get all of that stuff ready. So either before the holiday break or shortly after the holiday break, we can start uh, doing a training because all the training documentation that's on our website uh, has to be updated because all these things, especially with things that move numbers and move names. So yeah, we've got a lot of training to do and we definitely want to work with the assembly of reviewers so they understand all these changes. Uh, we're going to do probably one or maybe even two more of these kind of overviews, but then we're going to have a more detailed, um, you know, exactly what has changed and why. And it would be to a very targeted audience, primarily for that assembly of reviewers. Oh, great. Thanks, John. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, Meredith, I, I'm just wondering if there is a... Um, the question from live audience. Uh, if not, I can pass on the, the, the question to Francois. I do not see any at this time. Anybody? Okay, we can go forward. Okay, go ahead, Francois. Uh, you're muted. Uh... Okay, it should be better now. So yeah. the... I, I just want to, to say something about the clarification of the evaluation, self-evaluation levels. Uh, in France, we are using uh, court trust seal uh, criteria a lot to try to push people to improve their practices and to have these uh, progressive levels was a help for that because you, you could push people to say you begin here and then when you come back you have the next step and so on and I have a feeling that this disappears so I completely understand that it's much clearer for the evaluation process of CTS because the, the first levels were not relevant for CTS itself they were relevant for the proposers but it's I have a slight regret that we cannot use that anymore to, to help people to visualize their own progress before they get certified. Yeah, that's, that's actually a great point. And one thing I should have mentioned is that some of these things that, that are getting more fine in the actual requirements, we can expand on those in the extended guidance. We rely uh, extensively on that extended guidance. And I think you're exactly right. That's something we probably should add in the extended guidance to talk about, not just say you're either in progress or complete, that, that we mean there are various levels of in progress uh, while as far as the tool itself to do the evaluation, it's, it's more binary, but for the repository, you, they should think about it as that because we always want to get better. So I, I would uh, encourage maybe we look at that extended guidance and maybe elaborate on that. Uh, and, and we may touch base with you and see what you're doing in your community. Maybe we need to put that in the extended guidance. Uh, you know what we are doing in particular is to provide a tool to visualize the progress, to visualize the levels. 
So this will disappear basically because it was a way, it was especially important for the people who were beginning to see they started from a low level and progressing and this disappears in the new context. So right. it's a bit too bad. Any other questions or comments for, for John? Uh, John, I have a question that I, I post uh, the link to the, the draft uh, requirements in the chat. And uh, so how are people going to provide feedback for the draft? Uh, so there was a link there as well. Uh, there's a survey for feedback on that. There was a link there, um, and I'm not sharing my screen now, but in that presentation, there was also, I can put it in the chat. Uh, let's see. I'll stick it in the chat. Uh, but. And of course it's, oh, did it, the link didn't show there. Um, of course, it's in the um, uh, on our website uh, as well. That the that document is linked there as well. Let me find. It didn't didn't open my hyperlink here. I'll I'll put it in there again. It's not very pretty, but here here's the actual link. Thank you, John. Would you remind us of when you'd like uh, final comments on that? Um, we initially said uh, July 15th. Uh, we may extend that to the end of the month because uh, we're running a little bit behind now. Uh, so I, I would say, but somewhere between uh, July 15th and July 30th uh, would be ideal. Excellent. Thank you. Any further, any questions in the room? Okay, anything else online? Yeah, I don't see any. Uh, I think actually uh, Matthew's uh, lifters from uh, ARDC, I think, sent some links about. Uh, seems like I want to talk about some ideas uh, for self assessment. Maybe, maybe can uh, is, they have one for use for fair, but maybe uh, can be applied for uh, trust, I guess. Uh, Matthew, do you want to uh, comment a little bit on, on your message? Yeah. I, if I can I comment you. on that, yes. I, I, I think it's a, a useful comment because we have a, a tool which allows people to, to collaborate on their proposal, uh, on, on their uh, application for core trust seal and it visualizes the level they have reached for each criteria and maybe uh, we can simply keep in the tool itself the fact that there are previous levels and that they will appear at the certification level only the, for the two last ones so i think it's a great comment thank you for the comment because uh, it's probably what we will do. Uh, Jonathan, I think we will uh, we will show you the tool and you will see what I what I mean if you have not seen it yet. Yes, that'd be great. I'd love to see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Uh, any additional comments or questions to the, to the other speakers? Yeah. If not, I think uh, it was a great session uh, and uh, it's really enjoyed the discussions uh, at the beginning for the trust principles. And it seems there is a, um, a lot of enthusiasm for the uh, the working group. And, uh, and please uh, feel free to join us. And I think probably we'll uh, draft the, uh, the, um, the application. And I think if there's a lot of input from, uh, from people and, uh, and also thanks, uh, John, for update the requirements for Cartra Seal. Uh, that's a major uh, uh, development for uh, for the standard. And um, and looking forward to see the um, the uh, 
the more development for, for the, the different standards. And uh, and then probably, uh, if not soon, uh, and see you in the next uh, plenary and enjoy the rest of the RDA plenary and, and the International Day Week. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye, Meredith. Enjoy your career, food. Thank you. Certainly, <laughs> I'm enjoying it tremendously for all of us. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye, John. Bye, y'all. Mm -hmm.